Hi, I'm Gina. I'm a taxidermist and sculptor. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made the figurine of Thor, the handsome dog. Thor is a crossbreed of chocolate leopard dog retriever and the Chesapeake Bay retriever. He resides in the countryside of Alberta, Canada, where he lives with my friend and colleague, Ken Walker. Ken is a world champion taxidermist. He also recreated a Bigfoot and it was made into a movie in 2019. I learned a lot about mammal taxidermy from him. And recently, he gave me a chance to work on a beautiful Wolverine. So, I wanted to give him a nice present for his oncoming birthday. I first met Thor a few years ago at Ken's place. He was really friendly and gentle. Thor was crazy about playing with sticks. He wanted me to throw sticks for him all the time. One day, Thor brought me a deer foot. <laughs> and we had so much fun with it. So I wanted to capture that moment in a sculpture. It would show off his unique personality so well. These are the materials and tools that I used for sculpting. I should also note that I've not been sponsored by any of the companies and brands represented in this photo. I used oil clay, modeling tools, lighter oil, and a small paintbrush. And also wires for making the inner structure of a dog body. In the beginning stages of my dog sculpture, it was more of a rough composition using larger pieces of clay. At this point, it was more important to pay attention to the proportion, balance, and anatomical structure of the dog. I carefully studied reference of Thor and dogs of similar body type. Thor has quite big shoulder muscles. It was after that that I was able to add the details and texture of the hair using my modeling tool. And finally, I finished off the surface using a brush and a fine oil. Ta-da! I chose to make a silicone mold of the sculpture as I wished to produce multiple copies. I used 5 kilograms of silicone an electronic scale, plastic measuring cups, mixing sticks, and a scalpel. To make a wooden box, I used plywood, a glue gun, and Philip head screws. And here's the one piece cut block mold that I made. Oh, so happy! To make this mold, I had to make a box without lid so that I can pour silicone in it. I fixed the sculpture on the bottom side of the box. I put the wooden pieces together and fastened them with the screws. Just to be sure, I sealed the gap with a glue gun to help prevent any silicone from leaking through. And then I started to fill the box with silicone. Thor's having a pink silicone bath. Once the silicone had cured, I needed to properly cut the mold using a scalpel. This was the most challenging part of the project for me because it was my first time making a cut mold of a four-legged animal. I had always been nervous about cut molds, as one must accurately find the sculpture inside and cut down to it. I looked up to the YouTube channel of Robert Talon and got the idea. So, at the planning stages when I made the sculpture, I memorized where the cuts would be. So I had a clear idea on how I would manage this. I cut down very carefully and slowly and managed to get down through it. The mold is ready. Now it's time to pour the resin in it. For casting, I used two parts of resin, an electronic scale, paper starring cups, mixing sticks, and threaded rods. I also used super glue and epoxy sculpt. I poured resin into these tiny holes where the two hind legs and the ground meet. Before the resin could cure, I inserted threaded rods into the holes. I pulled the mold open and out it popped. The model came out beautifully. 
So far, I've made two from the mold. I found it better to cast the ears separately and add them afterwards. And invisible seams where the ears were attached were repaired and smoothed out using epoxy sculpt. Now it's time to paint. I used airbrush colors, acrylic paint, paint brushes, airbrush kit, primer, and a vise. Using a vise to stand the model really helped with the painting process. At first, I painted a primer using airbrush and let it dry. And then, I painted the base brown color using airbrush. I used a small paintbrush when painting the little details like eyes and hairs. I referred to many reference photos of Thor and noticed that he has some white hairs under his chin. For the base of the sculpture, I prepared a wooden block, a power drill, and two hex nuts. And for diorama, I used snow powder, diamond dust, wood glue, paper cups, mixing sticks, and clear coating spray. The dog was mounted on the wooden block by drilling two holes for the threaded rods and fastening them down from below with the hex nuts. Now I'm going to make some snow on the base. I grind the surface of the wooden block for better attachment of the snow powder. There are many different kinds of snow powder on the market. I used snow powder from Woodland and diamond dust from Moscow. I mixed the snow powder with wood glue and made snow dough. I then applied it to the block using a paintbrush. Before the mixture gets hard, I made some footprints in the snow. Can you see them? So cute! I also sprinkled diamond dust for glitter effect. Oh, I forgot to tell you that I sculpted the letters Thor using epoxy sculpt and painted them with gold acrylic colors. I also wrote Thor on his neck color. At last, I wrote my name and a brief letter to Ken on the wooden block. And I applied clear coating spray to protect the finished painting. Okay, it's done! It's cool, right? What do you think? I'm going to send a parcel to Canada. I've got a box and polyethylene foam. Hey Thor, you're going to fly far, far away from here. I should pack the box very securely. I've already hollowed out the foam using a rougher. Looking good, huh? All ready to go to the post office. I'm so excited to see how can it react to it. I hope the ears don't be broken during shipping. I dedicate this video to Ken and Thor. Thanks for watching guys. 